The makers of this whiskey call it the champagne of Irish whiskies. Let's find out if it's as good as they say. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt. I'm a whiskey nerd, and like I said, the makers of this whiskey call it the champagne of Irish whiskey. So let's get it into the glass, and I'll tell you a bit more about it. So this is the Irishman Founders Reserve, which comes from Walsh Whiskey. This is actually the same company that makes Riders Tears, and it was founded by a husband and wife team. And they call this the champagne of Irish whiskey because it is a blended whiskey, but it doesn't use any grain whiskey in the blend. Instead, what they use is a combination of single malt and single pot still whiskey to make this blend. This is the same in their other product, Riders Tears, except just the ratio is a little bit different. But in this whiskey, the Irishman Founders Reserve, they use 70% single malt and 30% single pot still whiskey. They then matured the whiskey entirely in bourbon casks, so you should get a nice balance between the malty sweetness, the kind of rich vanilla of the bourbon, and then some nice peppery, spicy notes coming through from that single pot still whiskey. Interestingly enough, the Founders Reserve is actually no longer available because they've renamed it. In fact, the Irishman brand has gone through a complete rebranding. So Walsh Whiskey was actually recently acquired by Amber Beverage Group. This is a much larger, much wider kind of range in company and they've acquired Walsh whiskey to kind of get their feet in to the Irish whiskey market. There's a couple of good things about this acquisition. So first off, Bernard Walsh is still on as kind of a director of the company. He's still in charge of making sure the whiskey that comes out is very good. But secondly, Amber Beverage Group is going to open up a whole lot of new markets to the Walsh whiskey portfolio. Before, they were only able to sell their whiskey in about 50 countries, whereas Amber Beverage Group have distribution out to about 185. So it's not going to be long before you can see much more of the Irishman whiskey products and of the Writer's Tears whiskey products in your markets. This whiskey, the Founders Reserve, has been renamed as The Harvest to kind of pay homage to that kind of traditional Irish kind of farming activity where they would harvest the grains and they would turn it into some really nice whiskey. But whether it's the Harvest or the Founders Reserve, whether it's the old bottle or the new bottle, it's the same whiskey in the glass. So let's go in for the nose and I'll tell you how it is. Okay, right off the bat, I'm getting a huge amount of apple. So the Walsh whiskey portfolio, whether it's Riders Tears or the Irishman, I always get this nice, rich orchard fruits kind of note coming off it, and it's definitely there. There's a really rich kind of juicy gala apple of Fuji apple. It's not sharp, it's very sweet. It's very nice kind of apple note coming through. And then beneath that, there's a bit of pot still spice. So pot still spice, if you're familiar with it, it is this kind of like peppery, white pepper, black pepper. I'm not getting a fully cracked black pepper, but I'm also not getting that white pepper. It's somewhere in that kind of between white pepper and black pepper note. It's a very, very sweet note. There's a lot of kind of butterscotch, caramel. And if you think of peaches, actually, if you're familiar with a tin of peaches, so if you know when you open that tin of peaches and you get that kind of syrupy peach smell, that's the kind of smell I'm getting out of here. It's nice, it's rich, it's dense, it's very like nice and juicy. It's a very, very sweet whiskey. Now, again, it was all aged in bourbon casks, so you're not really gonna get those kind of sherry notes. You're not gonna get that sherry spiciness, the nuttiness. It's just gonna be all leading with that nice caramel, the vanilla, the orchard fruits. It is only at 40%, so it's not gonna deliver a huge amount of burn on the nose. It's gonna be nice and approachable. So let's go in for the palate and see how it is. Okay, right off the bat, as soon as it hit my tongue, I got that pot still spice. Pot still spice, it is very distinctive. Now only 30% of the blend was that pot still whiskey, but it's still very distinctive. You get in that kind of peppery nose, that kind of tingly feeling on your tongue. And that's balanced out by a nice, rich, kind of sweet, caramel, malty note. I did really get a lot of those kind of orchard fruit notes, so let's go in again and see what else I can unpack on the second sip. Okay, this delivers a really nice, rich mouthfeel. You do get that with pot still whiskies, whether they're single malt or single pot still. When they've been pot stilled, you get that really nice, dense, rich mouthfeel, and that's here in spades. Despite only being at 40%, it coats your mouth, it's nice, it's rich. I'm getting a bit of the kind of spiciness coming through. It's balanced out with that malt, like I said. It's a nice, rich, sweet whiskey. I'm getting a bit of vanilla as well, and I think I'm getting a touch of oak, but that's more of the finish. 
on that palette I was getting a nice real rich hint of vanilla coming through. Yeah, it's just a really nice, rich, dense, sweet whiskey on the palate. It's nice, it's easy to drink, it's easy to enjoy. So I'm gonna go in for the finish and see if I can find that oak and see what else I can find. Getting that spice, it fades. Then you get the sweetness, it fades. And then just a little bit of toasted oak comes through right at the end. It's nice, it's a kind of a warm, almost charred oak feeling you get. It's nice, it delivers a nice bit of flavor. That oak really does kind of serve to round it out because you get a lot of sweetness up front on the nose. There was those candied peaches, the apples. Then on the palate, you get the vanilla, the caramel, a bit of spiciness. And then the finish, you get that nice spice again. You get the oak spice. So it's a nice bit of an evolution. It's not the most complex of evolutions because, again, only one type of cask was used. But it gives a nice kind of journey on, on the whiskey. And actually, I just got a note of cinnamon. It was just on there one breath I took. It was just a nice bit of cinnamon, came through, kind of came up and went away. It's not a huge note, but it shows us a little bit more character to this whiskey than you might otherwise assume. All in all, I think I can see why they call this whiskey the champagne of Irish whiskey, because you're not going to get that sharp kind of grain alcohol note. It doesn't have anything to hide. They're just taking two really good whiskies and they're blending them together. They're not taking a grain whiskey and then adding just enough malt whiskey to hide out some of the imperfections in the grain. It's just taking two really good styles of whiskey, mixing them together and get something greater than the sum of its parts. So if you like Irish whiskey and if you've tried something like Ryder's Tears before, I would definitely recommend the Irishman. It's a very nice whiskey, it's sweet, it's easy to enjoy and it's just a nice drinking whiskey. I mean, also with that acquiring by Amber Beverage Group, you're going to see a lot more of those Irishmen, whether it's in the old bottle or the new bottle, in your markets. You're going to see a lot more experimentation. I mean, Walsh whiskey were already experimenting a lot with different finishes. Uh, they did a Writer's Tears whiskey that was finished in Japanese casks. They've aged one of these whiskies in a Caribbean rum cask. So they're no strangers to experimentation. And I'm hoping that this new acquiring by Amber Beverage Group is going to let them keep experimenting and let them keep delivering new different whiskies in the Irish whiskey space. So I think that's where I'm going to leave this review. I put out new reviews every Wednesday and I put out cocktail recipes every Friday. So subscribe, you'll see them all. And until next time, Slanchek.